Welcome to the Bad Cats Club, where it is all about the horror, and today we're talking about 10 things to keep in mind if you find yourself stuck in a haunted house. Oh my god, a top 10? Really? It's not like that. I was listing the tips and there just happened to be 10 of them. Mm -hmm. Besides, a top 10 will look good in the tax. What happened to you, Kisa? It used to be about the games. Do you even play horror anymore? Yes, I play horror. I'm playing Splatterhouse right now. That's really more of a hack and slash, don't you think? I don't have to justify myself to you. Shut up! Well, before we can talk about how to maximize your chances of surviving a haunted house, you're going to have to make sure you're actually in one. This is more important than you might think, as the rules can vary quite a bit depending on if you're dealing with a haunted house, personal haunting, or a poltergeist. <laughs> you pick poltergeist for that? I know it says poltergeist on the box, but still. Well, if you don't consider the sequel's canon. Well, even if you just consider the first movie, I don't know. Shut up! I'm not doing this right now. You happy now? I'm showing up this piece of shit. That's it. Happiness is but the shadow. I'm doing this. Cast. And if you have a problem, you can say hello to my little <laughs> friend. Yeah. You just stay in that corner, negative Nancy. <sighs> so, how to make sure you're actually in a haunted house? While well, you arrive and the caretaker, local or owner, is reluctant to enter. Are you gonna come in? No, I'm good. He made it very clear that he had no interest in going inside. He this is as close as I get to 1408 unless it's that time of the month. Now this can mean a few different things, but it's your first clue that something is not right with this location. Sort of, well, heads up, if you will. No. Also, there have been quite a few deaths in the house previously. Sure. Isn't that how both your father and grandfather met their demise? <laughs> Three teens broken on a dare to prove how brave they were. Before the sun rose the next day, two were hacked to death. And a third ran out of the asylum, screaming into the dawn. The hotel has seen seven jumpers, four overdoses, five hangings, three, three mutilations. mutilations. Note that we also include disappearances. If they entered the creepy house and was never seen again, let's face it, they're dead. And if not, they probably wish they were. You're Lance Preston. Sean Rogerson, the actor, right? You've been alive this whole time? <gasps> the house, or a large portion of the house, hasn't been used since the gruesome murders, the devastating fire, the natural disaster, the satanic ritual. Take your pick. The point is... The house hasn't changed, and is full of creepy old stuff. yourself unable to leave for some reason. It could be that your friend is missing and you have to do a search, or you just really need that prize money, but more often than not, the house will just go fuck you and won't let you out. Those are some of the telltale signs that you are indeed in a haunted house. 
that and sometimes this will happen. So, you concluded that you are indeed in a haunted house, and you're now wondering how to maximize your chances of making it out alive. Well, the first thing you need to do is determine who you are, and I don't mean that in a zen way, like who am I and why am I here. No, I mean who are you in the group. In most haunted house stories, the group can be defined by a few basic characters, and usually only two make it out. A boy and a girl. And this is what you should be aiming for. The hero. He is noble, brave, kind to women and children, and good looking in a non-threatening way. Eddie Baker, pro, uh, former pro baseball player. Next up is the heroine. She's the voice of reason, a problem solver, and has hair that even after three days of not taking a shower simply will not tangle. Now! Now! What is it, Lauren? Where's it coming from? I'll tell you. These two have the highest chance of survival and will have to fuck up pretty bad not to make it out. Our next group is the convinced. First we have the skeptic. This person will scoff at anything not proven by science, try to explain away what is clearly paranormal activity with the house is settling, and will mock those who do not share their beliefs and proclaim that most anything in the world can be explained by leaky pipes. You know, you can say what you want, but the back of your head all of a sudden goes, oh my god! And it takes a second before the front of your head goes, no, you know, it's, there are ways to do it. This person's counterpart is the believer, who will go into the house wanting an experience, try to make contact and insist that the, all the ghosts really need is a good hug. Well, the <laughs> seance? Yeah. That sounds pretty Does, does okay. anybody know how to do good. that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, someone just got her day made. These two have a lower survival rate than the heroes, but they still have a chance depending on how good they are at not pissing off the ghosts and dying horribly. Which brings us to our last group, whose only chance is a last minute redemption, moving them from their group into the hero group, and even then their chances are slim to none. I'm talking of course about the greedies. Let's start with the bitch. The bitch is overly sexual, a backstabber, and will miss no opportunity to say something clever. Which part of that fantasy turns you on the most? Me with other men? Or just the other men? Everything you... And then we have the dick, who is suggestive to women, worries only about his own skin, and has no problem pushing you into danger to aid his own escape. Thanks for your help, man. Hey! It's no fun hanging out here, I can tell you. Now the lines between these groups are quite floaty, and it's not too hard to move from one group to the other. Unless... Well... There is one more group. If you're fat, nerdy, or spaced out, you're unfortunately the comic relief. And you're wasting your time. You're gonna die. My only advice to you is this. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be mutilated beyond recognition by them. Sorry. So the first group is the wannabe. And how do you make sure you're part of that group? Number one. Solve the mystery. You have to use this. Those little gray cells. And follow the clues. Read those documents that just happen to be lying around. Find that key and open that door to that secret room that no one has entered for 50 years. And try and put two and two together. 
missing kid plus crying woman ghost, obsessed with toys. Maybe a baby died and that made the ghost sad. If we can reunite Janet Humphrey with her son, perhaps we'll finally be at peace. Abandoned hospital plus evil doctors. They probably mistreated the patients and that made the ghosts mad. built on ancient burial ground plus satanic ritual well maybe someone summoned a demon and that made the ghosts bad oh my god Dad, she got the boy that the nurse murdered the little boy that's it come on you can do this Lizette go deeper the nurse sacrificed a child as an offering to a demon the patients rebelled the Killed yes. See what I did there? Did you, did you see? I rhymed. So now you're thinking, but Kissa, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. How am I gonna solve the mystery of the haunted house when I can't even solve the mystery of why my breath smells after eating onions? Well, not to worry. It doesn't have to be your brain in use. Just find the nearest Poindexter and follow them around as they solve the mystery, giving you partial credit for simply being in the same room. Because glasses, we're smart people. Wait, what? Number two, don't go alone. I cannot stress this enough. If you go alone, you will die. Now, in some situations, you will be separated from the group, but then your first priority has to be to get back to them. And if you stumble on a piece of the puzzle along the way, so be it. As long as you tell them all about it as soon as you find them. And I mean, you have to tell everybody everything. I don't care if the ghost told you that one of you is a traitor. I don't care if one of the others is out to get you. You tell everybody everything. Because trying to solve the mystery by yourself is gonna end badly. Oh, okay. Okay. Alright. Okay. 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 Number three, beware of friends acting weird. We've all seen it, the friend that disappears only to reappear when you're all alone. And my advice here is be very careful. If you stumble upon a friend who's suddenly not talking, in a place they have no business being in, or calling out for help when you damn well know they're dead, proceed with extreme caution. Because that means the shit is about to hit the fan. You're not going to want to turn and run here because the hero always tries to help. But at the first sign of your friend being a double ganger, you're going to win on GTFO. So scout out your exit strategies along the way. Because you're going to need them. For a second, I actually thought that you were a decent guy. What is your problem? Number four. Don't challenge the ghosts to come get you. Because they will. And you will die. That is all. Okay. 
Come on, motherfucker! Number five, don't be a pervert. It's kind of a no-brainer, but when you see this, you're gonna have an urge to comment. But you're gonna have to fight that urge. Don't hit on girls while hiding from danger. Don't make out with random hotties who magically appear when you're all alone. And for God's sake, don't say that the ghosts are kinda hot and you'd like to hit that. If you do, you're too stupid to live. Hey, nice dance. Oh, jeez, you. Number six. Don't turn on your allies. In most groups, someone is gonna emerge as the villain. It could be the guy who brought you there, or someone not truthful about themselves or the house. But you have to fight that mob mentality and not rip him a new one. If he is panicking, then by all means try and calm him down. If he's being abusive, then make sure he knows that you will not stand for bullying. And if you feel he's a danger to the group, then by all means tie his ass up. But make sure that you leave someone behind to keep them safe. But, but not you though, cause, cause that guy's gonna die. Big time. It wasn't the house. It wasn't goddamn ghosts. This is plain and simple, good old-fashioned homicide. Was it too complicated for you? Let me spell it out for you then, kids. A. Evelyn sure as hell didn't kill herself. B. I know I didn't do it, which just leaves us with C. One of you motherfuckers murdered my wife. You're talking crazy, Price. Number seven. Don't play with the ghosts or their stuff. The believer will try and convince you that the ghosts just want to have a little fun. This person is wrong. Don't talk to the ghosts. Don't mess with doors that open and shut by themselves. Do not follow the merry sound of children laughing. And for God's sakes, don't play with the toys. Dolls are creepy for a reason. Just treat the house like a fancy museum and imagine that the ghosts are roided up guards just waiting for an excuse to nail your ass to the wall. Literally. Number 8. Listen to the warnings. If the true believer tells you a book is evil, and you're not supposed to touch it, then don't touch it. But Kisa, how are we supposed to solve the mystery if we don't examine stuff? Look, if you have a sensitive in your group, or you find a thousand-year-old note written in blood that says don't open the fucking box, then don't open the fucking box. As for the mystery, I wouldn't worry. Some asshole is gonna do it anyway. Probably the skeptic or the comic relief saying something stupid like, What's the worst that could happen? Setting you up for a nice line of, I told you so after they're horribly dismembered. Read my lips. Save the warnings for someone who's not broke. Okay? Number nine. You should be nice to girls. I don't care if you're stuck with the biggest bitch that has ever walked the earth. I don't care if she stabs your ass and leaves you for the ghosts. I don't care. If she's your girlfriend and you catch her making a sex tape with a goddamn football team, you have to be nice. You might, and I say might, get away with raising your voice, but that is it. If you're a girl, on the other hand, just wait until she does something particularly nasty. And then you can slap the snot out of her, as long as you follow it up with a one-liner like she's your boss you can say 
consider this my resignation. Or if she's your friend, you can say, I never really liked her anyway. You must be kidding. I'm Steve Goddamn Price. Just, um, don't make out. The ghosts, they don't, they don't like that girl on girl thing, for some reason. Number 10. Stay positive. Kind of stupid, I know, but it sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy if you go around saying stuff like this. He's gotta still be down He's here. He's dead, alright? We're all gonna be dead. Will you stop saying that? And if you wimp out and panic, you're gonna be booted from the hero role and sort of become the comic relief. Unless you're the heroine, in which case you can get away with it in very small doses, just remember that the ghosts have a very low tolerance for bitching. But all this ends the moment you make it out. As soon as you're free from that house of horrors, it is time to look back and reflect on those who did not make it. And be sad that you couldn't save them all, yet grateful that you made it out, together with your romantic interest. Just, for the love of God, do not do this! I beat you! What if you... I beat you! Well, that was 10 ways to up your chances of surviving a haunted house, but I would just like to add that this only applies to western haunted houses. If you find yourself in an Asian haunted house, my advice to you is to bend over, put your head between your knees, and kiss your ass goodbye. Cause those Asians, they'll fuck you every time. Japanese, I think I'm turning Japanese, I will